Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, August 23rd, 2020, and it's 11, 11 a.m. here in Pasadena, California. Here's the update for the last week. Uh, the CFL has canceled the season for this year. Uh, just to note that the commissioner is a first level LinkedIn contact for me. Uh, Paul and the rest of the team are aware of this. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about this right now. Uh, China is clamping down on Macau gambling. This is a part of the big shakeup that's going on with the mainland. China is directed towards uh, the other satellite regimes like Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau. Uh, Beijing is now saying that gambling cash flows are a security risk for China. This is a major, major development, so keep an eye on this. Uh, COVID-19 is now the number three killer in the United States. That's a statistical fact. Make of that what you will. It's a fact. Uh, it's been 110 degrees here a couple days uh, last week in Pasadena. I've been traveling here since the 1990s, and I have not seen anything like this before. Um, so, again, make of that what you will. So, an just a comment here. Uh, it's my conclusion that basically the principal uh, powers in the world that move events are two. Uh, press and petroleum, press and petroleum. The Kansas City Chiefs are um, talking about or actually have announced that they're going to have limited fans in the stands for the, for the season. We'll see about that. Uh, I think they're jumping the gun on this, but they've at least put that out into the media, I think, to see what happens. I think it's about 20 percent. Uh, with all the things that are going on with the colleges right now, I would be very surprised if this holds up. Uh, there's a lot of turmoil in back to school and COVID related spikes. And I don't think there's going to be any difference uh, here with uh, putting any kind of fans together in, in this kind of an environment. Um, Apple hits $2 trillion. Uh, market capitalization, I would just like to say that an, a great deal of this is being pumped up by the uh, it, massive amounts of, of stimulus that are being pumped into the system from the Federal Reserve, basically printing money out of thin air. But not to take away the, you know, the, there's no question that Apple is, is a monster at this point. And I would just like to mention that there was a point, and I remember when this happened, because I was in the computer business, that, uh, that Steve Jobs was uh, kicked out of his own company and Apple came very, very, very close to, to disappearing off the face of the earth. So uh, there is something to the founders of a company and the vision. So Jobs came back and everybody else knows the story. So ASM is the cure for sports. That's on many levels. Uh, I'm just going to continue to say that uh, in general terms, and we'll put more meat on the bone there over time. Unemployment rate is uh, holding at 17%. This is a pure math problem. Number of unemployment claims. An unemployment claim is a legal contract. People are not going to lie on that. Almost never. Um, there's still uh, 30, uh, 30, 31 million, I believe it is. About 160 million uh, is the workforce. So that's uh, it's holding about the same and add about another 5%. The survey information that they put out saying it's 10 or 11% is totally bogus. Uh, there's no way in the world that that uh, number is even close to right. People are not going to file unemployment claims fraudulently in those kind of numbers. It's just by a factor of two, it's absolutely not the case. This is just an example of the media, uh, for some reason, conspiring to make things look better than they are. They're not. Uh, lots of big home sales in Los Angeles. You probably saw, uh, or maybe you didn't, but it, it's crossed several news wires. Uh, big homes actually here in Pasadena, some of the most expensive homes in the country I actually know where one of them is because it's on my bike route. Uh, it's a, in a neighborhood across, this, across the freeway, the 210 freeway from here. So these are like $50 million houses, $20 million houses, uh, $15 million houses. Th these are not people that are uh, flash in the pan, Instagram or any of that nonsense. This is longstanding, uh, you know, been here a long time. You're starting to see that uh, their market for these types of properties is not that large in the entire world. So it's, it's meaningful um, that they, they see a downturn that isn't going to turn around in the near term. And then NPR uh, put out a story about Vegas being the, uh, the 
current uh, source of the hotspot breakout activity in the, in the country. I don't know if that's true or not, uh, but if it is true, that is a, a very negative thing you want said about you if you're uh, Las Vegas or if you're in the gambling business. So uh, I'll just leave that there. I don't, I don't know if it's true or false, but NPR picked it up and, and ran it. And I saw it on all the major newsreaders. Um, okay, so a couple, couple more comments here, and then I'm going to let this alone because next week uh, there will be some legal process going out to put an end to this. Uh, so first thing, um, there never was a, uh, a trial on the facts in the Leon matter. Uh, if you take a look at the pleading that I filed in the notice board on the ASM forums, you're going to see that not only was I not allowed to attend the trial, I wasn't even allowed to speak on the phone uh, when my attorney was on the phone, or, you know, pleading to allow us to actually have the trial. That's all in the record. There's no way around it. Um, it didn't happen. I was denied due process and and it's, it's not going to stand. OK, so if it takes five years, if it takes 10 years, if it takes the rest of my life, whatever, this will be put down. It is going to be put down. I was denied due process and it's not going to stand. It's not going to stand. Take a look at that if you don't believe me. It's all there. It's all in the record. My pleading for being able to, to actually hold an actual trial being denied and all the rest. So there's there's simply no way around it. If you put out a different position, you are lying or you're doing it for some nefarious purpose. So I'm not going to spend any more time on these these updates on this. I'm just simply going to say this, that that is a misrepresentation that a trial took place. It did not. OK. And with the SEC uh, matter, uh, that is not a settled matter and nor will it ever be settled if it is not settled fairly. OK. And if that's not acceptable, they want to take it to trial. So be it. We can wrap this up in the courts for years. I have no issue with that, as you can clearly see with Leon going on 10 years. And if it takes 30 years, it's going to take 30 years. I don't quit. OK, so let's uh, let's see how this goes. OK, so Leon, no trial. OK, no trial took place on the facts. I was I was muzzled. And that's in the record. That's due process violation. That's actually a constitutional rights violation, and I'm going to make those claims, among others. And with the SEC, go to trial. It's fine. If the trial court doesn't see it, our appeal. If that doesn't work, we'll go to the Supreme Court. We're going to run it to the end. Okay? And as far as the mailbox, and it's going in both cases, in both cases, these are going to be dealt with on the facts and the merits, not on some technical lawyer games and bullshit, not some clever mailing things to the wrong address like that's been done before. And yes, that is exactly what happened. The D.C. mailbox has nothing whatsoever to do with the Costa Rica uh, all sports market. That was Crystal World Holdings. That is not a named entity. That is not where the, inform the, the, the case information was supposed to go. It was supposed to go to, the, uh, to Costa Rica. The address in Florida was a forwarding agent, and I was moving to Texas. All that is well documented. That's what happened, okay? Now, if you want to spin a story to, 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 to use technical legal arguments and win a case, which is what they did, that's, that's what happened. But you didn't try this on the facts, okay? And I'm going to find this court somewhere that will be sympathetic to this. It is just a matter of time. So, uh, whatever. The mailbox in D.C. had nothing whatsoever to do with Florida, and that's even irrelevant because it's in the record that I was on the phone with my lawyer pleading to have the trial or be allowed to put my side of the case on the table and told no, it's in the record. So, um, all right, that's the last time I'm going to discuss this until there's a disposition of those matters. The um, last summer before the lockdown, actually, obviously before the coronavirus thing took off. Um, I met a gentleman in the gym, actually over a long period of time, probably over the period two years prior to last summer. So last summer and going back. And he was connected to the uh, Dodgers organization here. And, you know, just having small talk across many uh, gym visits and, and such, uh, you know, um, I was I was talking to him in the period of time when the Dodgers went to the series and lost. So uh, it just 
I don't, I don't know why this has popped up now, but it's popped up several times. I'm just remembering how distraught uh, this gentleman was over, over the loss. And I kind of marveled over it because it went on days after days. I, I mean, I saw him on multiple days and it was an ongoing gr gr um, <laughs> grieving that was going on for multiple days, which really surprised me. So there is, uh, my point to this is, is there is a connection that 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 fans have? I, I'm not, you know, and I'm not I'm not uh, uh, deprecating that or trying to make fun of it. I'm just saying there there is a connection that fans have to to their teams, especially when they're this much of a fan that I simply don't share, and I'm I'm having trouble understanding. But I think I need to understand to really under uh, to understand how close this connection is between the fans and the teams. Um, Yahoo pulled all their common boards down. This was about two weeks ago, 10 days ago, and replaced them with a survey. I, I think this is part of the broader um, shifting that you're seeing in, uh, in squelching hate speech, which we've certainly had our fair share of it aimed towards us. I, there's definitely a move afoot between Facebook, Twitter, um, and other social media platforms to tamp down the, the, the public hate chatter. So uh, that took it, that took the form of removing the comment boards on Yahoo. So keep an eye on that. Uh, I'm calling this going public to survive. Uh, DraftKings and Airbnb, it looks like Airbnb is going to try to do it too. Right in the middle of talking about how bad their business is, sort of what happened to DraftKings. So I'm calling this going public to survive. Um, I think that's what's happening. You know, when you're like DraftKings losing almost $200 million a quarter, uh, that's almost $800 million. <laughs> it's hard to even say that out loud. $800 million a year, nearly. Uh, that's a lot. So yeah, if you have a million dollars in the bank, you're going to need it in about uh, 13, 14 months. So um, I said they have a year's worth of cash. Just on That's in prior videos. Uh, okay, so uh, DraftKings did that. Looks like Airbnb is doing the same thing. The SPAC sideways stories are now coming out, uh, stories about SPACs going sideways and not doing so hot after their initial release. Uh, you know, and I mean, look, it's a shortcut, okay? Shortcuts always have a price. So this is the price. Why, will gambling, why is gambling not a growth market? And I use the term gambling broadly, not just betting. I use it broadly. This is something that Alper and I have discussed and are still discussing. Um, I see them as equivalent, and he says they're not exactly equivalent. So you know, I'm waiting to hear what that is that I'm missing here. But gambling, um, gambling is not a growth industry because the people that <laughs> the people that you uh, make most of your money off of, you destroy. So gambling kills its customers. So killing your customers is not a very good growth strategy. And then finally, on the tax stuff. So I want to put a little bit more. Uh, meat on the bone on this. This is something that we talked about really pretty much almost from the start. Uh, Neil has a remem remembers us talking about it 15 years ago, and that was um, taxation on a transaction tax on ASM trades. You know the Wall Street tax that you hear bannered about uh, from time to time by politicians. I basically said let's let's just give that a try on our marketplace. The whole blowback that's coming to DraftKings, FanDuel, and the, and the gambling companies over this federal excise tax. This is a, well, that's a bigger issue. It's going to cause other problems, but let's just talk about the tax side first. This was our regulation play. So it was, you know, uh, put, a, put a transaction tax on the, on the system and make it worldwide, okay? So everybody in the world who has to, who wants to trade all sports market, wants to trade uh, sports shares, is going to have to buy dollars first. Okay, so whatever your native currency is, crypto doesn't matter. You got to get dollars. So that's a upward pressure on the dollar forever, basically. And then once you're in the system, then uh, so that's one benefit to the national economy. And then the tax, direct taxation of transactions would be the next direct benefit. And then the others are all the flow throughs that are, you know, capital gains and 
uh, all, all the other taxes that are built into the system, both at the federal level and at the state level, we don't need to even worry about that. As long as we report that information, all that uh, process is already built into the system. But what we can add to it is an excise tax. To uh, And we can bear, at this point, like the commission structure, I argued that 1% was the right number, and 1% is the right number, 1% on each side. I believe that on the tax side of this, we can do this probably for 50 basis points on each side. That's probably the top line number. It may be less than that. Um, I would say 25 to 50 basis points on each side. Uh, 50 basis points is one half of 1%. One basis point is one one hundredth of 1%. So uh, what would happen is the buyer and the seller would each pay 1% uh, as an excise tax, but it would be... Uh, added into the commission structure, kind of like now where you, you don't really, it's netted out. So it's not, uh, it's, it's not in your face and you kind of get used to it and you trade based on that. Um, I have never heard anybody complain about the commission structure at 1%. I did hear it when we had it at higher levels in Costa Rica and 1%, it's, it's not missed. And I think also because it also, it, it's half of that money is going into the dividend reserves in people's minds. That's, not really going to a commission, but it's kind of going to an account that I can have access to because when the teams pay, they pay from that fund, right? So it's really not, it's not seen as a cost. So on the tax side, uh, probably 25 to 50 basis, well, let's start with 50 basis points. So half a percent from the buyer, half a percent from the seller. So if the buyer and the seller uh, trade one contract at $100, there's 50 cents to the buyer, 50 cents to the seller, $1 total tax, right? One percent of the transaction. Now, the thing is, I just if you look at the numbers of just the pilot market, how how it turns over with the number of traders we have, you can see quickly. And I, I, I don't have any trouble saying this out loud with a straight face as a regulated market and or exempt market when it's going to get to a billion dollars a day in, in transaction volume pretty fast. Once it's up and known, it will get there pretty fast. And at that rate, of turning over $1 billion a day and buyers and sellers. Now remember worldwide, okay, don't scoff at that number because I can show you markets that'll blow your mind that trade more than that now that you've never heard of. Okay, so when people can trade sports teams anywhere in the world, any time of day or night, it's gonna be massive. In fact, it's gonna be 4X volumes uh, in the trillions of dollars per day, you know, I don't know, 25, 30 years probably when I'm not here anymore, but many others, but, but it will get there. Okay. But billions per day. Yes, absolutely. Because the gambling markets are that big. Uh, I don't know if they do billions in wagers. Per, it probably, I mean, summed up probably does. So what that will do, if we do 1 billion a day in sports share turnover, that's going to create just on that 50 basis points on each side, 1% total. That's going to create uh, a $10 million a day excise tax to the to the federal government. $10 million a day, okay? $10 million a day, which is interestingly what Las Vegas is losing right now. <laughs> $10 million a day, $3.65 billion a year in excise tax alone, okay? On just just <laughs> just excise tax on transactions. That's a significant $3,650 million a year. That's a significant number. So that's our play for uh, regulation, and that's uh, how we contribute to the national economy and the, the tax structure and all of that. So that's, that's a starting point. So that's it for today, a little shorter than last time. Um, you know, I try to cut this down as much as I can, not as much to say in this, in this uh, last week as the, as the week before. So thanks again for your time, and um, we are working very hard here, literally seven days a week. And I'll update you again uh, next Sunday. And stay safe with your friends and your family. Bye now.